Welcome back, and our geopolitical, historical, and military analyst uh, who was here yesterday, uh, T- Tim Alexander, is here to give us a major update. The peace pact is now on the table, and again, Russia has been putting this forward. It's very hard to, to say you're not going to do this. Uh, the Ukrainians want to save face because do they want to have their butt kicked by the Russians? No. They did something yeah, very uh, stupid. What a difference a day makes, right? When they sent in tanks and in jets and started, uh, and apparently there are three or four uh, pro-Russian, these are Ukrainian citizens that are pro-Russian, they're of Russian descent and language. They were killed. Uh, Russia could have done something really stupid and invaded. They don't have to. They just didn't say, we Russia, you negotiate, we want deal. And that's it. <laughs> and, and Putin's sitting there, sitting pretty. He has the ace card. He basically is saying, we want to have federated states within Ukraine. We don't want you to mess with our pipeline. We want uh, Kirkov and uh, Donetsk and these other cities that they're planning on quote, put down in the terrorists. This is what these maniacs in Kiev, these sector right and, uh, the, and, these, and the Medan party, these maniac idiots thought they were just going to send in tanks and jets. And then some of these... Well, <laughs> and their prime funny. minister, who's uh, uh, a... Zionist uh, yeah, but, invest our uh, central banker. You know he was put in to loot the country. Yeah, but, and but, these people live in their own world. Right, but here's the, here's the thing: when these soldiers and, and and people came in, they hadn't eaten in four days. So the people in local towns, like in Donetsk, brought them out to cafe to feed them. Yeah, and they said, "Here's a ta- here's the keys to the to the tank. We don't want it. We will go back home." I'm thinking these are Ukrainians. They're being pushed by. European maniacs like this guy, uh, Lars Well, Rasmussen. what Putin said, he, he had a four-hour, uh, he does this once a year, he had a four-hour right. television interview where people can call him and ask him questions. And right. he said, they're nuts. He said, uh, they're, they're attacking our own people and our own people. Well, you know, the Ukraine has been part of Russia for 300 years. Right. So it's kind of like uh, uh, Virginia are are one of the oldest uh, thirteen original colonies right. suddenly is split off, and uh, there are people. They may be Southerners or Northerners or, or Virginians or uh, North Carolinians or whatever, but there are people. And uh, when they they manage to kill a few people, he said, "Are, are people? You know." Yeah, and, I think uh, that Putin has a uh, Putin has been very decent and very measured in his response to this, and he could have done some really horrifying things. I mean, uh, and, and of course the West, I think, wants a false flag. They want some moron to hit the pipeline, for example, coming through Western Ukraine near Kiev. They want some justification to provoke the Russians to do something stupid like a full invasion. What the Russians want is three things. They want federated states that can affiliate themselves with Russia to get uh, breaks on their their fuel, uh, double the pensions which they currently have in Ukraine, which are going to be halved if they join the IMF and the European (laughs) Union. Uh, And they want to have no damn first-launch strike weapon systems put in Georgia, Ukraine, you know, uh, Moldova, and Poland. I mean, would we like the idea of having missile systems set up to neutralize our launch on command sequence Put in uh, right, say, Cuba right. Well, or and, Nicaragua. But, but beyond I mean, that, I, too, right before the foreign ministers met in Geneva, Putin gave a, very, a veiled reference to uh, you know kind of an invasion being imminent. Right. And uh, there's there's some serious hardball was played. I would love to have been a fly on the wall right. because there was a deal. And I don't know what the deal consists of, but I know there was a deal. Uh, the United States and the West uh, and the people pulling their strings, uh, particularly the global banking cartel, they right. wanted something, and Putin wanted something, and he probably had a couple tricks up his sleeve, and uh, there was some wheeling and dealing, I'm sure, went on. But at the end, forward. they were able to come out with a deal, and I think... Uh, we dodged a bullet, and God heard the prayers of millions of people. Uh, right. It's not that uh, we won't have the Third World War sometime, but I don't think it's going to start this week. Right. Yeah. In other words, we can have a party called a delayed Armageddon party. Uh, <laughs> yes, I think here's, so. Here's the thing, uh, and, 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 and it can be highlighted by one simple fact. All of our step-down transformers for our power grid, which is now more vulnerable than ever because the idiot in the White House 
wants to push green energy, which means more nuclear reactors, more solar, more wind. Oh, that's green, all right, yeah. That, bl- that blows the hell out of the power grid that can't tolerate that. All of them are made in China. So if China, we basically tick them off, they can just decide, Santa's not coming with power transformers for you Americans. You can freeze to death in the dark. And guess what? We can't do a damn thing about it. The same with Russia. Russia is basically holding the testicles of Germany in its hand with its gas. Exactly. And basically exactly. saying, now, do you Germans really want to do this? And Germans are saying, no, we want tourism. We want to sell our products to Russians. We want an expanded economy. Well, we well don't this want is you to the thing. Russia. Behind the scenes, there was a, a, a broad spectrum of countries in Europe that that individuals within those countries had different agendas but a, there are a lot of money a lot of power behind the scenes and particularly in germany because germany basically was going to lose most of its generating power and you were going to see blackouts across germany it's very well, difficult to run an industrial machine when you don't have energy and you know, I, I think a lot of people were waking up. This is, reminds me uh, about what three months ago, maybe, when we were very close to going to war against Syria. NATO was going to invade, you know, and all this stuff. Right. And the Russians kind of laid the gauntlet down. And finally, some people in the British House of Commons said, "No, we don't want to die in World War Three." And, you know, uh, they, they passed a resolution saying we're not going to, to go to war in Syria. And that, in turn, spurred people in the American Congress on. And that was all behind the scenes, but it was very much a real thing. Right. They were saying, hold it. Uh, I want to play golf next Thursday. I play golf every Thursday. If we blow up the world, the best I can hope for is to be in some crappy government bunker for the rest of my life. And I won't be playing golf on Thursdays, et cetera, exactly. et cetera. And, you know, uh, so there's, there are players at all kind of levels. Now, what scares me long term about this is you have these, these lunatics that won a third world war to get their new world order. And they've tried several things in the last uh, six months to get us there. And they, they don't stop. If one thing doesn't work, they go to another. Or, or they use a proxy room. Or they use a proxy republic like Transocetia, which is right on the border between Poland and, and Russia. And they, they have these little trigger areas happen, or a false flag. You see, I think the chances of Europe or America doing a false flag, just like 9-11, Oklahoma City. And when I, I really get disgusted by people that want to label me, Dr. Deagle, you're a conspiracy theorist. I want to slap them intellectually. I want to kick them in the pants. I want to just have them sit there. Tied to a chair well, so they can't plug their You know, uh, Dr. Ears, Bill, if, if, if people that simply watch ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, etc., and suck in everything they tell them, yeah, and but the it, world is the way they tell them, all I but, can but, say but, is people like that, one, you're stupid, and two, you're a damn fool. Well, it's not just this. There's a personal responsibility. It says in the Bible that it's our duty to stand up against evil and speak against it. But it also is when they have an ignorant person that's viciously ignorant and doesn't want to ask the right questions or know the truth, they put all of us in danger. It's like I said, I've used this analogy before. It's like you get in a, a lifeboat, and there's about 36 people in the lifeboat. It's a big one. And off one of these cruise ships, and someone finds a fire axe inside the lifeboat and decides it's better to let the water in quickly by <laughs> axing a hole in the bottom of the boat. And everybody yeah, right. jumps the guy with the axe and says, my God, man, are you crazy? And he's in a panic, right? And his sweat's coming off his forehead, and he's having a, some kind of breakdown. And what we have to do is we have to kind of tie him with a bunch of ropes and stick him in the back of the boat and stuff a sock in his mouth so he won't keep yowling and screaming. That That's or tie the, uh, the anchor around his neck and uh, toss him overboard. <laughs> no, we wouldn't do that. You just, you just put him over there like, <laughs> like a pet that's lost his mind. The problem is, you see, people don't have a right to be stupid in this situation. They don't have a right to a fire accident to hit the bottom of the boat. They don't have a right to be stupid when we have a situation where we can end civilization. So out there, if you think it's fine to be quiet when someone makes a stupid statement at your party or your home or your brother or sister, you're putting all of us in danger by not confronting that idiot. We can take over these buildings and we're going to try you and execute if necessary. And I said it on the air. No, but we're not going to put up with it. Welcome back, and it's interesting the juxtaposition of the rationality of Mr. Putin trying to defuse the situation, which is being aggravated for $5 billion cost. And by the way, 
I think what was the name of her? Uh, the uh, lady, uh, I don't even want to mention her name. It's so nauseating. It makes me, oh, I get a, a yuck feeling in the back of my throat when I mention her name, so I don't want to mention it. But, Hillary? No, not Hillary. Hitlery. I call her Hitlery, by the way. It was her other lady. It was actually, the, the, I call it the liocracy of the continuous lies we get from these so-called government agents who is lying about those damn blankety-blank-blank Europeans and, 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 uh, and, uh, well, doc, uh, you know, Dr. Bill, here's the thing. Uh, we won another one. Uh, we won one a few months ago when we, we avoided World War III over Syria, and now it looks like we've won another one by avoiding well, World War III over Ukraine. Well, that was a combination of and Mr. Putin. It's the same way again. And uh, we, we had the BLM and the federal government blink. And, of course, then we get this evil Mormon SOB, Harry Reid's with that evil freaking smile like a snake that just ate a mouse say it's not over yet. Let me tell you, Mr. Harry Reid, you should be zip-tied in prison with, with a steel toilet and no access to the Internet. The same with your son, Todd. And the idea of selling off American territory, this is unconstitutional to the, to the Chinese, and it's not the only situation. This has been going on since this moron, Bill Clinton, did this back in the uh, uh, in his second term. Bill Clinton get, sold uh, the technology, allowed it to be sold, to the Chinese that uh, would allow their very crude ICBMs to target American cities. Right, it was their nervous. ICBMs be... under Clinton could uh, could not really even hit an American city. Right, and so... uh, when he, by the time he left office, they could they were extremely accurate. They, and the I technology pulled up all the information on. Us. I can't pull up all the information because I knew from the inside working in the mid '90s at U.S. Space Command and the uh, military grade GPS and their other space projects. That under the uh, Lockheed Martin Inner Sputnik, they set up in the, uh, a special uh, stock fund in in London, England, and they transfer technology to the People's Republican Army and to the Russians, <laughs> targeting technology through this project called, called called the Iridium Project, which is the uh, low Earth orbit satellites or LEO. Low Earth orbit satellites. I knew the investment banker that put the whole original deal right. together. And the LEO, by the way, this LEO project was part of the integrated mark of the beast. I got the actual patents from Lockheed Martin. I spent time with the actual scientists who were developing the mark of the beast system. I have the actual almost 700 pages yeah, of documents. It concerned me there were 66 satellites. Well, they had more than that. They had redundancy, so they had actually more like yeah. 77. So they had but redundancy. So if one operating. Out, right. And what would happen is they'd hand over the low Earth orbit signal, because these are in real low orbit. They're not 22,000 miles in geostationary orbit. They're passing over the Earth, and, and almost like, you know, batons being thrown in the air by a juggler. And the real danger to these things is they were used from the public. You could actually get a iridium phone to actually make business contacts anywhere you could be in the Sahara Desert. But it was also used by the military. And this is part of the integrated Mark of the Beast system, the Iridium Project. All the iridium satellites are built out in Chandler, Arizona. Uh, they're all being put up. Uh, many of them actually using RD-80 Russian rockets, believe it or not. They're being shipped out in Pepsi trucks from Littleton, Colorado, under license from the Russians, who their scientists are not slouches like our scientists and NASA project, which they're purposely making everything go black op <laughs> because they don't want the public to know anything. Oh, they even put out all this garbage that we never went to the moon and you could see this flag flipping in the wind because they actually hired Hollywood people to make a false movie that we didn't go to the moon, we were there six years before the eagle even landed. So this hoo-ha that they have out there and this false dialogue that, oh, no, we can we can do it at the time when uh, when uh, our personal phones are 100 million times more powerful than the computers on this so-called uh, capsule that went to the moon. But yet, no, no, we didn't go to the moon back then. Well, yes, yeah, and, and more than that, you know, uh, Nikolai Tesla invented uh, basically free energy, uh, other people, uh, a fellow I know, Dr. Hiroshima Nakamats, who has more patents of invention than any human being in history, including you Nikolai Tesla, you, Alexander you Graham that. Bell, etc. He invented a car that ran off water. Water is H2O, two yeah, atoms of hydrogen bonded to one of oxygen. Right. There's, there's a whole body of suppressed technologies and su oh, well. suppressed medicines. Well, and there's, one, uh, one, there's one doctor up in, a PhD physicist, it's develop cold fusion engines in Vancouver, Canada, and there's an actual company there, and people don't believe, oh, yeah, they don't have cold fusion. Yes, they do. They have pi meson fusion engines. They have basically the engines that are in the Aurora Space Fleet are miniaturized tokamak fusion reactors creating helium-3, which is in the 
dust on the moon's surface 500 million 500,000 times higher concentration because it's created by the solar wind and because the magnetosphere shields the earth from the solar wind it lands on the moon in fact because of the magnetosphere they get a big sweep of it that lands on the moon and they have right. huge amounts of helium-3 on the moon's surface and you don't even need to dig into it fine it's right on the dust on the, moon. Uh, the thing is okay as americans we need to get our act together because we have allowed well, the, the act uh, together just since they the took truth. over since they set up the federal reserve and by the way the the uh, the constitution amendment that allows uh, income tax was never ratified it, it, it right. lacked the state but but more than that when they killed president kennedy in broad daylight uh, and the, the the fall guy was actually photographed standing on the street in front of the book depository oswald he didn't do it uh, from that time on, it's gone downhill. The criminals have, uh, the, 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 the seeker government has really taken over. And now we have a president that, uh, well, what we do know about him, he was a homosexual prostitute and a drug addict, uh, along with his buddy Rahm Emanuel, who, who, who is or was a, a Mossad agent, and now mayor of Chicago. But beyond that, you know, we as a country, we Americans live in the richest country on earth. Our streets yeah. should be paved with gold. But, we have allowed these evil yeah, clowns yeah. to create the, the, the Cold War, Korean War, Vietnam War, Tim, Tim, God Tim, knows how many wars we're Tim, in let me now, give you the diagnosis to bleed us, to Tim, bleed us, and to create Tim, booms and busts. Tim, now Tim, we're in a great depression again. Yeah, Tim, let me give you a I'm, diagnosis of why. The diagnosis, and you're right on, the diagnosis is the stupid knucklehead people that listen to us and, and abuse us and won't even ask better questions. As I say, the only tagline on this show is, you must ask better questions. You don't have to believe what we say, but you have to pursue that. You have to show us enough respect to actually pursue. Skepticism is not, a shield not, against evil. And the reason why Obama is just a symptom, just like Adolf Hitler was a symptom or Stalin or whatever. These are symptoms of ignorance. You know, they exist because our fellow Americans decide that they want to listen to both the Kardashians. Our and fellow I Americans want to read about that, you know, local the Kardashians that, that uh, right. trash is right. more important they, to them wanna, than what affects their daily I, I life. Watched, I watched a clip today about a, a British woman who was saying that this is a lot obscene. They were on MSNBC, which is one of the most obscene networks out there. And this British woman, who's a newscaster with her glasses on, trying to look really intelligent, made the most obscene statements that about the Constitution, about how he, that, that Mr. Uh, Cliven uh, should just obey the law and uh, all the other ranchers obey the law and their fees, etc. I mean, where's the, where are they coming from? The Constitution from? is the ultimate law. Right, all and when you read the Constitution... passed I mean, by Congress and state legislatures and any local authority has to comply with the United States Constitution. Not maybe, well, not kind of, not, you know, on a good day. They have to comply with the U.S. Constitution. And if they yeah. don't, they're not valid. Well, Obama, under his rule, wants to grab all the way from Wyoming right down to to uh, New Mexico, another millions and millions of acres of land with our money. Uh, against the states. Jerk.